All right, so the next topic we're going to discuss is balancing chemical equations. Uh, chemical equations uh, represent chemical reactions that occur, um, and essentially what we have, why the, the reason why we have to balance them is we have to follow the law of conservation of mass, okay? So essentially the number of moles, so essentially the number of moles on the reactant side has to equal the number of moles on the product side. So if you start off with 10 moles of carbon or one mole of carbon, you have to have the same number of moles of carbon at the end of the day. You can't lose any carbon or make any more carbon spontaneously. Uh, that just doesn't happen in a chemical reaction. Um, and so that's, you know, uh, the most, uh, the, the basic point of balancing chemical uh, equations. And then just the finer details of them is that we're always going to include uh, the symbols of the phases. Uh, used in the, for the chemical reactions. And of course, uh, you know, gases, liquids, solids uh, pop up all the time. And then of course, if something is dissolved in water, we say that it's in the aqueous phase, and we have to indicate that as well. A lot of times, um, the phase change uh, tells us when a, a chemical reaction has occurred. Um, next, uh, uh, a future topic would be precipitation reactions. When you see a solid form, you know a precipitation reaction has occurred. And so it's important to write down phases. Um, at the end of the day, um, this is the number one thing we have to make sure we're doing. Number of moles of reactants equal the number of moles on the product side. Uh, but then just a couple of uh, tips um, and tricks, I guess, uh, to make this easier. If we're um, given an equation using uh, the names of the chemicals, it's first idea, uh, first uh, good idea to write down the skeletal equation, meaning the unbalanced chemical equation with the formulas. And then we're going to balance atoms and compounds first. We're going to leave elements to the end. Um, polyatomic ions, a good trick with them is that you can balance uh, polyatomic ions as one unit. So if you have a nitrate uh, involved in the chemical reaction and it doesn't change chemically, uh, you can balance it, that as one thing. So instead of balancing uh, you know, nitrate as one, one nitrogen and three oxygens, you can say okay, there's one nitrate on the left side, two nitrates on the right side, and balance it as one unit. Uh, then we're going to balance free elements to finish off uh, the chemical equation. And then sometimes we might need to use a fractional coefficient, and so we can get rid of those and get to whole numbers by multiplying through by the denominator. And then, uh, you know, you just want to check both sides to make sure that this is still true. Okay, so let's do a couple examples. All right, so the first example, we've got aluminum reacting with hydrochloric acid uh, to produce aluminum chloride and some hydrogen gas, all right? And so what I usually do is I make a little table of my reactants on one side, my products on the other. All right. And so what I'm going to go through is I'm going to try to balance this. Okay. So on the left side, I've got one aluminum and one aluminum on the right side. So right now that's balanced. Okay. So that hasn't uh, changed. All right. Uh, I've got uh, one hydrogen. On the left side, I've got two hydrogens on the right. So I need to fix that because right now that's not balanced. I've got an extra hydrogen on the right side. So first I'm going to multiply the hydrogen by two. Okay. Uh, now that's going to give me two chlorines on the left, three chlorines on the right. Um, that's not balanced as well. Okay. Um, it, I, but uh, since it's an even odd situation, two and three, um, I'm going to have to find the least common denominator over here, so that's going to have to be six. Okay. So really what I'm going to have to do um, here is I'm going to multiply that three, that two times three, and then this three times two. Now when I'm changing a coefficient that I've previously um, put in place, you have to remember that I'm multiplying three times two, so that's going to be six. All right. So let's erase that 2, let's put a 6 in there. I probably should have given some more space uh, in these notes. But anyways, uh, and then three, those three uh, chlorines. Now that's not a coefficient, so I'm just going to multiply this by 2. Okay, so now I've got six chlorines on both sides. Now I also need to go back and think about the hydrogens. I just balanced the hydrogens with that 2 coefficient previously. Now I've changed it. So now I've got six hydrogens 
on the left side and still only two on the right. So I need to multiply that by three to give me my uh, six uh, hydrogens on the left and on the right. And then last but certainly not least, um, we've got the two, aluminums are unbalanced again. And if we thought we finished balancing, uh, you know, this equation, we could have gone through and checked it, which we will at the end of this. Uh, but I know since I put that aluminum, changed the coefficient of that aluminum, putting that two on the product side, I've uh, changed the number of coefficients uh, of aluminum. So right now I've got two aluminums on the right, uh, one on the left. So I need to multiply this by two as well. And so now I've got uh, aluminum balance. Okay. So I went through and changed uh, a lot of those uh, coefficients a couple of times. Uh, so what I need to do is just go back through and check. Okay. So uh, on the left side, I've got two aluminums, two aluminums. I've got six hydrogens, three times two, six hydrogens. I've got six chlorines, two times three is six chlorines. So everything is balanced. All right, for our next example, we've got a reaction between calcium hydroxide and silver uh, one nitrate. It's producing silver hydroxide solid um, and calcium nitrate, still in the aqueous phase. All right, so let's balance this. And again, set up a little table, reacting some products. And for this one, uh, I've got a bunch of polyatomic ions, not a bunch, I guess two, hydroxide and nitrate. And so this example is when one that I can uh, use to balance uh, polyatomic ions is one unit, okay? Uh, so first, I mean, you don't have to start with those, but so I can start with calcium. I got one calcium on the left, one calcium on the right, so calcium is balanced. Uh, here, instead of thinking about this as two oxygens and two hydrogens, since hydroxide is the same on the left and the right, hasn't changed chemically, I can balance it as one unit. So I've got two hydroxides on the left and only one on the right. So I'm going to multiply that by two. So I'm going to put a two coefficient uh, in front of that compound. And... Uh, now my hydroxide are balanced. I'll go back through, um, keep going, I guess. Uh, silver, I've got one silver on the left, two silvers on the right because I just put that coefficient in front of silver hydroxide. And so I need to rectify that by putting two in front of there. So that's a two in front of the silver one nitrate. And now my nitrates, polyatomic ion, that hasn't changed. I can balance that as one unit as well. So I've got two nitrates on the right, two nitrates on, or excuse me, two nitrates on the left, and now two nitrates on the right. And so it's balanced, so I don't really need to adjust any coefficients for that. Okay, um, as always, I'll go through and check just to be sure that this uh, chemical equation is balanced. And so I've got one calcium, one calcium. I've got two hydroxides, I've got two hydroxides. I've got two silvers, two silvers, and then two nitrates, two nitrates. All right, so that is balanced. Uh, one thing that I should uh, uh, specify is that when you're balancing these chemical equations, notice that I'm always uh, balancing them with coefficients. I can never go in and change the subscripts. I can never say, okay, I need two aluminums, I'll just change that to Al2. No, you can't do that because that's not how aluminum exists in nature. It's not a diatomic element, so it's just aluminum. And so I have to change with coefficients. So instead of saying I have two uh, aluminums in a compound, I'm just going to say I have two moles of aluminum. And that's how we balance the chemical equations.